Well, 10-year Treasury futures start the month in a decidedly uncertain position, at least judged by the range that we've witnessed today, but also the narrowing range we've seen going back to January 21st and 22nd. There was more unknowns over the weekend. It influenced the, the response, I suppose, today, and that to GOP's counterproposal to President Biden's $1.9 trillion fiscal stimulus package, the GOP counteroffer is $600 billion. Um, that said, the markets, uh, the risk assets over around the globe did not um, respond negatively. In fact, there was a risk on rally for most of the um, G10 countries, and yet Treasury futures were just content to stay in a very narrow and tight trading range. Data uh, was plentiful today. Uh, it did anchor a little bit for the 10-year boon, which did rally ever so fractionally. Euro European uh, PMIs January were revised up. That was completely offset by the worst uh, retail uh, number coming out of Germany in 64 years. On our shores, ISM manufacturing underwhelms expectations, although within the sub-index, uh, prices paid hit a nine three quarter year high. Um, also, another end trail of all this is that break even uh, spreads are modestly lower, um, adding some fuel to uh, the bullishness for U.S. Treasuries today. However, again, in a very small range. Now, going ahead, um, refunding on Wednesday, that's going to be a center stage because how is the Treasury going to approach the issuance landscape with the fiscal spending that we're proposing and the deficit and the unknowns of all that be very important going forward. Um, the unknowns of, of the fiscal package, you know, coming back with a, a counter proposal of less than half, it doesn't bode well right now. And also we have BLS on Friday. Last but not least, the trajectory, the vaccine is going to be um, laser focused, uh, followed by any kind of forward or present looking economic developments in the United States and around the globe.